Hello everyone, it's so nice to see you again. My name is Rachel and I am so thrilled to be joining you for Victory Kids Online. It's the first week of September, that means we have a new theme. Woohoo! And this month, we are going to learn about... Friendships! With the September holidays coming up, I'm sure you have planned many things to have fun. But these plans are more fun when you have friends to enjoy them with. God did not create us to be alone. The truth is, He made us for fellowship. That means God desires for us to have friends. But before I tell you even more about the wonders of friendship, let us spend some time with our best friend right now. That's right, it's Jesus. Jesus is the best friend ever. It makes Jesus so happy when we choose to spend time with Him. He loves to be close to us and He is pleased when we spend time praising and worshipping Him. So, let's do that right now. Let's go! Rejoicing, breaking silence, you are my God alone. Time to stand on your word with passion, heaven's our home. Oh, and I can't stop giving you praise. Your fame will last forever, and I won't stop living. Your name, declare your praise. Why? 
Haley here, and I love parties. Don't you just love parties? I love all kinds of parties. <laughs> birthday parties. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday dear Haley. Happy birthday to me. And who doesn't love a good block party? Feedback toss. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I could use some lessons. <laughs> Which is why friendship is so important. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. 
It's kind of hard to have a party without friends. And honestly, it's hard to even plan a party without friends. You need a tall friend to hang the lights. <laughs> you need a friend who can bake. Mmm. And if you got a friend who's giving beanbag toss lessons, tell them to give me a call. The point is, we need friends, and friends need us. And in today's story, we're gonna talk about what makes a friend a friend. That sounds like fun! It makes me wanna party! The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter four, verses nine, through 12. The writer of Ecclesiastes tells us two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Suppose either of them falls down, then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person. One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. And a rope made with three cords isn't easily broken. Let's see how this might play out in someone's life today. Jackson slid into the small school theater and took a seat in the back row and waited for Mr. Ray, the music and arts teacher. It looked like there was only one other kid who showed up to build the set for the fifth grade production of Charlotte's Web, Amal from Mrs. Wiseman's class. Hey. Hi. The two boys sat there in awkward silence until Mr. Ray showed up. Ah, my set team, fantastic. You guys know each other? Kinda. Different classes. Well, you're gonna get to spend a lot of time together in the next two weeks as we build this set and get it painted. You guys got any experience with power tools? Jackson could see Amal shift nervously in his seat. No, I just, I don't wanna go on stage. Miss Wiseman said I could do this instead. Don't worry, I'll teach you what you need to know. How about you, Jackson? I'm pretty good with a hammer and I didn't wanna wear some silly animal costume. The two boys basically ignored each other as Mr. Ray showed them how to measure each piece of lumber for him to cut. And then he helped them lay out the pieces in a large frame. Now, this'll be one of the wall flats for the backdrop. We'll paint it as part of the barn. Amal, you want a hammer in these nails? Uh, I guess. I'll hold it more like this. Don't worry, you'll get it. I'll do this side. Jackson nailed together the entire flat while Amal still struggled with one corner. Ah, <sighs> what a klutz. But it was a different story the next day when they started to paint. This flat is part of our barn wall. I want you guys to paint a couple of chickens right there. Amal grabbed a brush right away. Oh, do, do you want them to look like real chickens or like cartoons? Nah, just give them your own personal spin. Amal got to work right away creating an entire palette of colors while Jackson was still trying to figure out which brush to pick. Now, I've got to run down to the art room. Amal, why don't you show Jackson how to get started? I don't really... Mr. Ray smiled at them both. He needs a hand. I think you guys will make a great team. Mr. Ray hurried out. Jackson and Amal avoided each other's eyes. <clears throat> well, I'll sketch an outline for the chickens. What do I do? Just, you know, fill it in. <sighs> I'm not really an artist. Jackson dipped his brush randomly in the blue paint and frowned at Amal's outline. Just have fun with it. Jackson swiped the blue brush, outlining a wing. <laughs> I've never seen a blue chicken. Oh. It's great. It'll stand out. Oh, uh, thanks. By the time Mr. Ray returned, Jackson was surprised to discover that he and Amal had already painted five brilliant hued chickens. Mr. Ray grinned. I've never seen a more flamboyant flock. Jackson held out his fist to Amal, and Amal, surprised, gave him a fist bump. Yep, see you boys tomorrow. The next day, Amal showed up with a bruised finger on his left hand. I can still paint with my right. What happened? Mr. Kunkel keeps putting me in as goalie during PE, and then I mess it up, and everyone on the team gets mad at me. Uh, do you stay on your toes? 
keep your eye on the ball? No. I just panic when the ball comes at me. Look, I can show you some tips later in the parking lot, before my mom comes. Really? That would be great. And you know, Jackson turned out to be a pretty good teacher because Amal managed to get two blocks during PE the next day. And when Jackson showed up to paint sets, stressed out by a math test, Amal grabbed his textbook. Fractions? Uh, I see all these weird numbers and I freeze up. You just have to break it down like this. With Amal's help, Jackson managed to stay calm during his test the next day. And by the middle of the next week, they had completed the entire backdrop for Charlotte's Web. Well done. I knew you two would make a great team. Amal's pretty okay. Jackson's not too terrible. Look, I know you guys are really different from each other, but it's boring if all your friends are just like you. Together, they started gathering wood scraps and wiping off brushes. Seriously, one of the wisest men to ever live pointed this out. Solomon. Solomon? Yep. He's this king in the Bible. He was a builder and an artist and super rich too. But for all the things he had, you know what he valued most? Friendship. He says it like this. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Hmm. On point. Yeah. Amal held out his fist and Jackson tapped it with his own. Maybe Solomon and Mr. Ray were onto something. Okay, here are four things you can learn from those verses in the book of Ecclesiastes. Number one, friends get more done when they work together, which makes a whole lot of sense. Planning a party goes a lot faster when I've got someone to help me out. Which brings me to number two, friends help each other. A true friend doesn't just sit back and watch when it's obvious you need a hand. Little help, little help here. Oh. Ah! Number three, friends stand up for each other. You better not be messing with one of my friends. I will totally fight you. Unless, you know, you're bigger than me, then I will not bite you. In which case, I will totally reprimand you with some carefully planned certain words. Just don't mess with my friends, okay? Uh, and number four, friends help you trust God. You may have a lot of different friends in your life, but a true friend, one that lasts, is the kind that helps you make wise choices. The kind of friend you can talk to about what you believe honestly, and who can help your faith in Jesus grow. So here's the one thing to remember today. Choose your friends carefully. I think you should try to be a friend to everybody, whether it's a friend you choose or not. But when you're deciding who to spend most of your time with, you should choose carefully. Ask yourself, is my friend helpful? Would they stand up for me? Do they help me trust God more? And while you're at it, ask yourself this, am I a helpful friend? Would I stand up for others and help people trust God more? Hmm. When you wanna find good friends, one of the best things you can do is to be a good friend and never forget, that Jesus is your ultimate friend. He is always there for you, no matter what. So, be on the lookout for good friends this week. When you choose wisely, you can't miss. Today's lesson taught us the importance of choosing our friends carefully. True friends help each other and stand up for one another. True friends will also help us draw closer to God if we don't choose our friends wisely, we may end up doing things that pull us away from God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, that bad company corrupts good character. This means that bad friends can turn a good person into a bad person. But the Word of God warns us not to be fooled by those who would lead us to disobey God. For example, friends who encourage us to tell lies, to make fun of others or even help you to cheat in an exam or a test are clearly not good for us. It is very important for us to choose our friends carefully. So how about yourself? Are you a good friend? If we want to have good friends, we should also be good friends to others. Now, let's take a look at our activity pages and see how we can build good friendships. First, we have to decide what makes a good friend and what makes a bad friend? Use a green colour pencil and colour the boxes here that shows what makes a good friend. Then, use a red colour pencil to colour the boxes that show what a bad friend does. If we are able to identify what makes a good friend, 
chances are we are more likely to choose the right people to hang out with. Now, let's take a look at ourselves and learn some ways that we can be a good friend to others. God created us with different body parts and each one of them can help us to be a good friend. For example, I can use my arms to help my friend carry their heavy books. Or I can use my hand to give an encouraging pat on the back when they do a good job. For our next activity, let's find out how well we know our best friend. Think about the friends that you have in your life and choose one friend whom you would consider to be your best friend. Write his or her name here and also draw a picture of your best friend here. Then, fill in the blanks with your best friend's favourite colour, favourite food, favourite activity and some good memories that you have with him or her. Good friends remember important things about their friends. So let's put in some effort to get to know our friends better. And finally, for our last activity, let's think about the importance of friendship. God gave us friends so that we can help one another. With friends, we are able to do more things compared to doing them alone. Let's write down three things that cannot be done alone and much better when done with friends. So after you are done, Say a prayer to God to thank Him for giving us good friends and pray for opportunities to show God's love to your friends. Alright, let's get started on our activities.
Great job, kids! Now you're all set and ready to be a better friend to those around you. Always remember that building a good friendship is like building a strong house. It takes time, energy and patience. Besides working on building good friendships with those around us, we also need to put in effort to build our relationship with God. God sent His Son Jesus who died for our sins and rose again so that we can have a relationship with God. Without Jesus, we are not able to get close to God because sin separates us from God. God loves us so much and it makes Him sad when we are far away and apart from Him. That's why I am so thankful that Jesus made a way for us to be close to God. Jesus is alive today and wants to be your best friend. He gives joy, encouragement and forgives you when you make mistakes. He loves you more than anyone else in the world. If you don't know Jesus, I would like to encourage you to say this prayer with me to invite Jesus into your heart. The rest of us can learn this prayer so that we can lead others to accept Jesus. Say this with me. Dear Jesus, I want you in my life. Forgive me of all my mistakes and make me a new person. Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. You died for me, you rose again, and right now you are living in my heart. Today, I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen! If you said that prayer for the first time, I'm so proud of you. Receiving Jesus into your heart is the best decision ever. For the rest of us, the best thing that we can do for our friends is to tell them about Jesus so that they can receive His love and have a relationship with God too. Now before we go, let me pray for you. Let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for showing us the importance of having good and healthy friendships. Teach us to be a good friend and to choose our friends wisely. More importantly, help us to grow our relationship with you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen! Alright, that's all we have for today's lesson. But there's one last tip I have for you about friendships. A great place to find good friends is right here in Victory Kit. You can build your circle of friends starting from your small groups. I also made many good friends in church when I was your age. So have fun with your small group friends and I'll see you next week. Bye!